Kick. We're live now. What's up, everybody? Welcome We're back for another Wednesday night of the good life. That's right, the good life. Uh, Stu, I hear your echo, or I mean, I got this, but I got to once I get off, I'll figure it out. We'll make it happen. Anyways, we're back, guys. Another night. Excited to be here with you. Hopefully, you joined us for the earlier uh, pregame show that we had over on Instagram. Again, we're doing that an hour before just so you guys get a chance to see the back end, what, what we do, how we talk about uh, the topics that we're going to come up with. Again, they're all surrounded by health, wealth, love, happiness, your relationships, your mindset, what we're doing in our body, what we're doing with our money but we want to have thoughtful conversations that add value to you, that help you out um, so that you can continue to grow in your area. So again, if you're on Facebook, hit that thumbs up. LinkedIn, uh, also hit the like on YouTube because that's what allows people to see this type of stuff from what I learned about the algorithm, which we don't know much about, but either way, that's what they tell you to do on these things. So welcome, gentlemen. Hello, good sir. Hey, hey, hey. It's good to see you here. Likewise, likewise. We just spent an hour together, but now let's dive into the meat. Now, we said that we were going to start with the topic, but Stu left off with a little bit of a, I don't want to say a cliffhanger. It's a little bit of a open dialogue that we think maybe we can go into. I don't know. This is up to you guys. I'll throw this out to Kabi because you were the one that had something to respond. But if you I'll don't... Take. A hot take, that's right. He had a hot take. So let's, we're open to hear your hot take. You might have to cue up the audience and give a little context. But either way, if you have a hot take, we would love to hear it, sir. Yes, sir. You know what? I would like to offer the table to uh, good sir, DJ Stu Teddy Bear. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Who told you about my name? <laughs> That's my artist name, bro. That's got to come out at the right time. Yeah. Listen, my apologies. Put it on my tab and um, get back to you. I think it would be, be great if you could kind of recap what you were saying, because uh, I think it is critical. Okay. So... Let's see. We the stage was kind of set. Um, Chris, you had mentioned that there was a certain post that where a guy was reacting in a non favorable way to this new button that I'm not entirely familiar with at the moment. Basically, like, you know, it spotlights, you know, how to find black owned businesses. And there was something a bit jarring in that for you. And I think one of the things that we ended up taking that that pregame conversation to is how exactly should or what is the best way to handle our society moving past some racial type tension because obviously i think we've all been living and paying attention to what's going on let's run under a rock there there's been tension in the past couple of years and a lot worse tension depending on what type of history you're familiar with for for our history as a country and just around the world as well like race race has been a volatile issue not just in speech and diction but in world policy and war and genocide and segregation. I mean, I could, the list could go on. Right. And the question is, and, and what I was really bringing up is, you know, how do we best move forward as a society? How do we, how do we come together? How do we eliminate division by race and, and have it be much more congruent and flowing and not necessarily the, the most important feature of a person's life, their skin color. Now, of course, it's the first thing that we see, but does that, are we able to move past that? Now, what I was bringing up is a quote from Morgan Freeman, um, where he was being interviewed, um, you know, and he was kind of, they kind of warmed up the question of like, hey, you know, you're very, you know, culturally successful, presumably financially successful individual, like as a, as a black man, especially as someone older like he was, who would have started off a little bit, you know, before even us the three of us were even on the planet perhaps is when his career would have started to take off. And theoretically, if our society is progressing when it comes to race, things should be getting easier for different types of races to find different types of success. And I think that's a very, I emphasize should be, because I'm not saying it is. Um, and really what I, the quote, how he responded to that was, I think that we could 
remove a lot of the tension around race by just simply not talking about it. Remove the descriptors from the headlines of race. You know, remove the different types of focus, like why in every single news broadcast that's put out when there's a story about a crime, like why does race have to be the first thing? Why do we care? Like, why is that necessarily the first thing that's brought up? Why does it have to be, shout out Tope, um, why does it have to be the first thing that's mentioned? Why, did, why are there different types of images of very different um, natures being presented when it's one race or the other? Why is it such a focus? And he, his whole thing was like, I think we stopped talking about it. Allow people to lead by example for their communities and just allow people to see that type of thing and not necessarily have it be the very first thing you hear when it comes to a headline. Yeah. Um, and I think there's a lot of um, validity there. There's a lot of um, stuff in that what you're saying um, that I think is very important for folks to hear. And in fact, there's a lot in there that I agree with. Um, but for the sake of this conversation, uh, I, I think I'd like to highlight a few things that um, I think we should consider. And if you guys would allot me a few minutes here, you know, I want the camera on me. <laughs> oh, anyway. And 100% right. Shout out to Mr. Righteous on Instagram. Absolutely. Propaganda. Shout out Righteous. I can't quite see it to manipulate the minds. It's very true. We talked about the mass media and the propaganda and the powers that to be. Control and manipulate the mind. Got it. Yeah. I, I think it's really important, man, because, um, and this will take a minute to unfold a bit because um, this, this like health is something that I've looked at for a number of years. It's actually, I've, I've uh, it's actually what my degree is in, right? So, it's something that I'm very careful when I speak on because I'm I, I think I'm often speaking from a space of just a different set of information. I'm pulling and and, and what I'm saying, not to say it's not a high ranking system, but more to say of like I realize that a lot of times, you know, if we're not if we don't have our terms matching up, if we don't have our history matching up, if we don't have our our, our where we're coming from matching up, we're speaking so far apart that it actually just causes more chaos than it solves anything, right? So I'm offering this as you know a perspective to anybody who maybe just wants a different perspective on this. I asked the question, I think it's I think it's really I think the resistance to what Morgan Freeman is saying and not saying I don't think he's wrong necessarily, but the resistance to what he's saying, why hasn't it happened? That's the question. Why hasn't it happened, right? I think it hasn't happened because you're talking about cultural paradigms versus individual lived experiences. And sometimes those things match up and sometimes they don't. What do I mean by that? Morgan Freeman, that's great for you to say, brother, but I live a different experience every day, right? So how do I, because for what he's saying to happen, we all have to come to an agreement, I believe relatively around the same time and agree to drop all of this in our language, in our legal system, in our history, in our, in our society. And what I mean by that is, you can't tell me for a second that we haven't created a context in which the way that you look doesn't dictate your quality of life. It definitely influences. Now, whether it dictates step by step how it goes, no. But I think we would all agree that it influences our quality of life. So then how, so then if I, if it influences my quality of life and my quality of life goes boop as a result, yeah, let's drop everything. I got it. I agree with that. Let's drop everything right where we are. Cause for me, it makes my quality go oop. And what, why do I want to keep talking about it? That's no benefit to me. Right. But I want to keep talking about it if it does the opposite. 
So this is where I go to individual experiences. Uh, and I think it's always so interesting because this is right around the time where people love to pull the Morgan Freemans of the world, the Will Smiths of the world. Look at him. He did it. But he's not me. You know what I mean? He's not me. So I, I just want to I think it's important if we're going to do this topic justice to look at all perspectives and to look at all live all to 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 consider all that we can. Because I, I actually think it's not even appropriate for us to just do one conversation on this. I think it's that deep and that important and penetrates into all areas of life to that level that we cannot do it justice in one hour. But I and for me, I think it's that important that we take the time to break this down because we it is causing a lot of turmoil in where we stand, right? But the question then has to also go to, well, what is this thin race that we even talk about? And I would suggest that for us to even drop, bam, just drop it, right? We all have to be at the same agreement. Would you, let me just stop there. Would you guys agree on that? That for us to say, okay, now we're done. Let's move forward and let's stop talking about it. Let's stop putting it, let's stop harping on it so much. All of us have to be in a, in a maybe not a hundred percent, but we have to get to a level of agreement for that to even work, right? You would you guys agree with that? To clarify, okay. we would have to get to a specific level of agreement that that philosophy of dropping it would work in order for us to even begin the idea of dropping the topic. Is that what you're talking about? We have to get to a uh, we have to all elect to actually take that on hmm. we, we we all have to, i can't say okay i'm dropping it and then the rest of the world is saying no right half of the world can't say we're dropping it and the other half says because then we're in the we're actually in the same hole it of like division yeah <laughs> ah, you see what i'm saying this yeah. is where i'm getting at this is where i'm getting at so I think for us, and, and, and uh, anything else you guys want, let me just pause because I, I don't want to just keep no, going no, there because it's... I'm all ears, bro. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. For us to, to, to do that, we have to agree to drop that all at once. And I don't know about you guys. I'm very optimistic. I think, you know, the world is great. I think things are pretty awesome, but I just don't see that happening. It's not going to happen. Right. I just don't see that happening. Why? <laughs> because why of the example here. I... Bam, this is the example I already gave, because what we did is we opened a can of worms that we can't put back. You understand? So it's not even a, I, I, I'm not, and I'm not proposing a solution here. I think at the end of all of this, right? I've been in so many of these situations and all others like, okay, then what do we do? Yeah, what do we do? What do we do? <laughs> that's so funny, because that's exactly where people take these conversations. Like, okay, well that, Okay, so then what do we do? Well, that's what we're all trying to figure out. We're trying out. to figure it yeah. out, yeah. Right? We're all still yeah. trying to figure that thing out, for sure. And, and so I think that's while, so yeah. important. Because while, while it, we're on this, I'd like to highlight ahead, that real quick. The, the whole reason that we even came to this discussion is because somebody in Instagram is trying to make this happen. And their proposed solution is like, what if we highlight black businesses? So it's, it's very interesting that we kind of came full cycle on that. But please continue. No, I think that's so important. And I realize I'm going to have to grab my charger, apparently. But uh, I think that's so important because it highlights it goes those type of comments goes to our humanness. Right. When we when we come out of the 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 living in that container of race that we've created for ourselves and we come out of that and we see our humanness, it's a different conversation. Because when I ask, okay, what is he doing? Oh, I don't agree with that. Da, 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 da. Why is he doing it? Oh, okay, I agree with that. I just don't like the with way the, he's going with about the intent, it. not the attempt. I agree with the intent, not the attempt. Exactly. And I think a lot of people feel that way. But I but we're speaking completely different languages and this is this is my real point we're speaking to totally different languages right we don't even know what we, we this person is saying hey you know race da, blah, 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 blah. race da, blah, blah, blah. race da, blah, 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 blah. yeah all of those three people none of them have the same definition of this thing we're calling race anyway they don't you ask people to they come up with they eventually come up with some socially gathered sort of definition that they can kind of piece together. But what is it? Is it biological speaking? Because that's what they used to tell us. 
they told us that, listen, biologically speaking, you can distinguish, but now we know that's not true. Right? They told us it was in law. This all this conversation legally starting around law started around started with cases around a, a Japanese man who wanted to be considered a citizen of the United States of America. That's where this legal, like writing it into law definition of what race is and who fits into what box kicks off. And legally speaking, after that, it's been case after case after case after case that that the entire fight is around what box do you fit in? You can't, that's, that's pretty hard to just drop. You know what I mean? Like that's a, we're talking like, I know, I know of about eight, maybe more Supreme court cases that deal with this, where we're literally defining what box humans fit in. And then all of a sudden we just drop all of those. We still operate on a lot of those, by the way. So it, it impacts our life. Like the box that I check impacts my life. You know what I mean? And then not just that, we got to look, I touched on the science a little bit. I touched on the legal piece a little bit. And then he touched on the historical piece a little bit where you realize too that like, okay, sure, this race thing, we can't even agree on what it is. And it's most will now realize that it's constructed and completely made up and reinforced anyway, but it still kept my great grandparents from getting a house for two or three generations. That's, that's still real. How do I just drop that? <laughs> you know what I mean? So I think I, I just want to point that out. And then not only that, man, when we also look at, so four things, fun, final thing you look at, when you look at the game of race, because if it's not biological, meaning that it doesn't distinguish, and I'll, let me pair that, let me finish this up when I come right back because of my computer about to die. I'll, be, I'll grab it like two, two minutes. Go for it. What's funny, what's, what's funny is on that section of race, um, I heard Dr. Claude Anderson say one time, like the reason they call it a race, somebody's got to win. It's an actual race. Like Ooh. there's nothing in our language, like our language oh, is really powerful, right? Yeah. Like these are the things that we just take in as words, but like it's a race. It means there's winners and losers. That means somebody wins, somebody loses, like it's a race, <laughs> right? And so those types of things, um, I think we have to be aware of, like when it comes to even how we're talking about it and what the language is. And that's why we can't just drop certain things. Like this was constructed for there to be winners and losers. It's so interesting. You just said that. Cause the moment I, the moment I heard you say that, I just Googled like, you know, why is it called race? And there's so many different things that just came up here, man. Like, um, a lot of stuff that Khabib was just talking on, like biological myth, social reality, just it's not about skin color. Yeah. Then what is it about? So how, I'm curious, Khabib, like, you know, given given your experiences and the amount of time you've spent really diving into this topic. How would you define race? <clears throat> so this is this is something that um, kind of taps into the the solution piece of it in that we're looking for something that's clear cut. But the truth of the matter is the definition of race has evolved and been molded to fit whatever those that have power want it to fit, period. Mm -hmm. Biologically speaking, right? Go ahead, Chris. No, I said that's just a very good point. And I think that that's spot on. That's spot on. The definition has evolved according to what they want us to believe about it. I think that has a lot to do with it. That was great. And it's literally evolved legally. It's evolved, like historically speaking, it's evolved by a lot, like science speaking, right? This, this all dives into, it all kind of merges and molds with the eugenics movement, right? So it's, it's all this mad rush to biologically define what are the, what are their differences to the point in which they're actually making making stuff up like making up da data that didn't exist surprise surprise this is something they do in science by the way you know <laughs> science yeah I, I i think it's so critical and, and the last thing i was going to say i think it's really important to look at race from all those different places because that's where it comes from it's this fictitious thing that's been created and then how was it? Perp I, I, I missed one. Um, religion. 
religion, right? Because some people in their gut heard this whole thing about race. They they heard this thing about race and they were like, I don't know. I I think, you know, I think he's just like me. Like, I think she's just like me. Like, I kind of like them, actually. Why do I have to be what? That doesn't make any sense to me. Then they go to church. They go to their place of worship and the religious leader confirms this using <laughs> the, the word of God. Right. So we get it. We get it reinforced in our place of worship. We get it reinforced educate in our education system. We get it reinforced in our, quote unquote, our great science system. Right. Where the, we get it enforced in, in, in our our our. our, our are, are like I think you really have to look at all those things and then not and then look at the overall game of race. Why did the definition mold over time? Definition mold over time because we want to keep the result the same. In the game of race, where biologically speaking, race just means that I cannot pro procreate with you because we are not of the same race. Clearly, that's not true of humans. Clearly, that's not true. So we can end the conversation right there. Uh, so we clearly are not using a scientific definition of race at all. But in the game of race as created, somebody always wins and somebody always loses. And usually they're the same characters. What do you mean by that? The same characters? In the game of race? Like within a within Black a loses. Let me be, oh, Let me be clear. Let me be very clear. And the game of race, the game of race is designed so that black and the darker, the worse, right, loses and the lighter, the better wins. Because you guys got to remember, you know, I, I, let me bring a little bit of international perspective. This thing goes beyond. It is it is probably one of the greatest exports. And what I mean by that is. Race. Race as a construction, then being used as justification for slavery is an export of the United States of America. That did not exist. Slavery existed, but not race based slavery that didn't exist. So being written into law that based on characteristics that continue to change over time as I need them to. Right. Based on that, your offsprings opportunities in life are dictated. And, and again, this is where I push back on Morgan Freeman piece a little bit, because for a long time that did dictate. What you had access to. No questioning that, that like we can we can disagree on everything that came before, but like I, I, it's pretty difficult. <laughs> to, it's pretty difficult when you literally have redlining German, like very obvious things here, right? Lynching, like real stuff took place. I think if you, and I'll pause it there because I want to hear what you guys think on, on what I just said here, but if you, if you take a Morgan Freeman line, by the way, I want to rephrase this. I have in the past. OK, I'm not like saying the dude is wrong and I'm also not saying he's right. I'm just saying consider this in addition to mm. if you take that, then I think you also have to acknowledge that the level of healing that needs to be done. For the individuals who feel traumatized to move on clearly hasn't taken place. And before that's done, I can't go to my lady and be like, I get that you're upset that I didn't show up for our date. But can we move on? Right. Something has to happen. Some healing has to take place, right? It's a conversation. We got some people on Instagram saying, right, like colonialism actually, right? That's that that is a form of race-based slavery, right? Like when the colonizers come to any country, they are they are taking the people of that land typically by their race, yeah typically by the color of their skin. This is yeah. where things get interesting. It, 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 de it depends how they defined race. Race wasn't always race wasn't always just simply what color is your skin? Because like, OK, if you th there are people who have the same skin color as me. 
right? But they would be categorized based on who you asked in a different group. I say all that to say it's, arbit it's arbitrary as shit. Like, let me, if I may use French, it's arbitrary as hell. It really is. And it literally comes down to what a lot of this stuff comes down to, which is power. So in that spirit of it, that's where I start to pull from what the Morgan okay. Freeman, that statement states. And I say, ah, when we recognize that, it, if I'm benefiting from this, I think it's a lot easier for me to recognize, oh, okay, it's all it's all a game against all we, like, we, we all actually suffering here, right? If I'm not, and I have this thing that's been keeping me, it's pretty hard for me then to say, oh, wait, no, 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 we're actually all suffering from this. Let me jump. You, you're asking a lot when that healing hasn't taken place, and that's my point. So I want to I want to take a moment because we do have, like Chris was saying, a lot of people jumping in with some comments here in, in IG. Oh, let's do it. Yeah. So I think one thing I want to get clear on is, you know, there's some comments about how, you know, colonialism, colonialism, slavery has existed in numerous parts of the world. And I think that what Kabi is trying to emphasize is that skin color based slavery was in existence in the U.S., and in other parts of the world, it was about different parts of race, where race is not just about skin color, just to set the tone for those chiming in. Race is a bunch of, like, basically an arbitrary, uh, abstract concept to, to suit whatever the ruling majority had in order to categorize minorities. So I think if I were to, if I were to take some other examples... And let me say this. I, I think it's important to point this out. It was not minorities. It, These were not minorities. The minorities were actually those that were making the rules. Yeah. It was actually it was actually to control the majority. Oh, that's it, interesting. Yeah. So th th this is critical here. Again, this might we might need a part two, right? For you to really understand that piece of it, you got to understand what happened. I believe it was 1770, uh, shoot, I, I got to double check me, but it's Nathaniel Bacon's Rebellion. Nathaniel Bacon's Rebellion was a group of Native Americans. Again, please excuse my terms here. I'm just, I'm just trying to get you the information, trying to, trying, you know, Native Americans, Black Americans, all types of other Americans who didn't fit the plant, the white elite planter class including poor whites and middle-class whites, by the way. Critical to understand that. That group included white, black, Native American, all types, all types in there. But it was by class, not by any other thing, not by my wooliness of my hair, not by the skin, not by the, the ridge of my nose, not by the freaking color of my eyes, not by any of that. It came down to the bread, y'all. Follow the money. That's what it came down to. It came down to the money. So when the white elite planter class, the minority, realized the majority, which didn't have as much money as they did and worked for them, typically not under slave, the structure of slavery, but under a structure of seven years servitude, independent servitude, right? Indentured servitude. But they were like, yo, over time, I'm not saying this was in one meeting, I'm saying, but there were definitely meetings, right? <laughs> you know, shout out, if you know your Virginia history, you're gonna know this, right? But it was, it was, there was several meetings taking place where essentially it was kind of like, they kind of realized, wait, 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 if they continue to do that, we're in trouble because they are number us by quite a bit. That's a lot more guns and we just, we, we just don't stand up, right? So white folks, let me tell y'all something. Poor white folks. Why are you with them? Yes, you're poor, but you're still white. Come on, why are you with them? You asking back in the day? No, no, no. I'm saying that's what? what that's the idea that was sold to poor white folks in that group. You following me? There's a group of folks, Nathaniel ba ba Bacon's Rebellion, a group of folks that rebelled against the elite white planter class. Mm -hmm. I also want to point out and here you're that, that they were part of that group. There were poor white folks. In a part yes. of that rebellion. Okay. Yes, there were a lot of white folks. They're by indicating that themselves. it was not race based back then. It was class based. It was financially. The, based. the idea of race didn't even exist. Mm -hmm. 
Hmm. So very different that it's not race based versus the idea of race being even in existence. That's not how people pick people apart. So the reason the invention of race was for what I'm describing. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So when 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 the elite white planter class, by the way, I, I again want to point out that the 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 the, the elite white pointer class was mostly white, not a hundred percent. Those that had power to actually make things move were white, but they were elite black planters. That was a thing. There were elite other non-white planter class that had land, tons of land that they had cultivated, that they had worked with. But these were in, these were people that were working together, not people that owned people or people that were paying, even people that were paying, they were they had agreed to work on this stuff together. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I think it's just so critical, man, because we get this, this stuff right here. I believe you, I believe you gotta understand this to even get to the level of having a discussion of whether or not we stop talking about this. Cause we don't even understand. We don't even, we don't even get like the basics of what it is that we're the verbiage that we're even using. We're throwing the word race appears in every single article, but we don't have an even a standard definition of what it is or where it came from or how its impact was. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I think there's a lot more unlearning that has to be done for us right. to even begin to have solution based conversations that, and questions that, that that hits a lot of it could be that hits a lot of it because it really does come down to a conversation like having i feel like we were talking about this on the early part of this ha like we don't have these conversations enough we are trying to no one's account right everyone's thinking about being offended and what they can say and what they can't say but we're not trying to get to a place of understanding and just really getting to some base definitions some base level things that we can then agree on or at least have a base of understanding on. So then from there, we can build out a lot of these things, right? Like that, that we need to clearly have conversation about. I just don't think we're having enough of these conversations. Hence why we do this show. Hence why we do the good life. Like all of these conversations are so necessary, whether you want to have them or not. These are the things that are barriers to getting to the, a great life, right? It's really just understanding. I mean, especially because we have to live in a society. Technically, I mean, technically we don't, I guess, right? But we're choosing to live in this society and we need to understand certain things in this context, right? But I think we just need to have the conversation more. There's a, there's, there's a lot that can be said. Could be, you just said a lot, right? Like that needs to be processed for, for myself, for people that are listening, that maybe don't understand fully the path that you just went, just understanding some of the origins, some of the history of racism, of what race is, right? Just even those things. Again, before we could drop the conversation, that's why obviously we took some time to go into it. Because I think this this type of stuff is is incredibly important. Yeah. Incredibly important. Hey, let me, I think, it, I was black for a very long time before I ran into this information. All right. <laughs> I lived like I, I was too I was too old. And what I mean by that is like again, I always point I'm a student in history. And it took me like 20 21, I don't know, 22 years to encounter a set of books that told me a slightly different set of information that makes a lot more sense. So I think even besides just having the conversations, I feel like I don't even I'm even nervous because I, I just see some fights. I see some unnecessary things. If we just like take a minute, this is this kind of lines up with the way I approach health. Right. If we take a minute and do and provide the basic understanding of what's happening here that has been layered over over time, I think a lot of people do get healing from that so that they can have these conversations beyond that point of hurt. And a lot of people do get released from that, from the white guilt side as well. Like all sides get relief 
when there is this understanding and common knowledge in place. I've seen it. I've been to so many workshops, room full of very diverse individuals, when they can come to an understanding and create a set of rules of respect, understanding, compassion, etc. But with some understanding, like you can't just walk into the room with all types of ignorance and just because you're you're bleeding rainbows and unicorns that you, you think you're going to have an effect. That's not going to work. I need to know that you still have some level of understanding of my lived experience. Yeah. Some. No, you don't need to be all the way there, but some. Right. And I think this is where we come back to the individual versus undoing global paradigms. Yeah. I want to I want to jump in here. There's there's a there's a lot of things that we've talked about. And right now, what you're kind of alluding to is how the past couple of weeks we've gotten into this terminology of like the fundamentals, like the 101 level, the 202 level. And I think that what we are beginning to get into here is beyond the 101 level understanding of race, like different types of things like understanding that race is not just a skin color, because I think at a very like perhaps I don't know if we would classify this as one on one or less than that, but because for me personally, this has been a very enlightening like conversation because I had always thought of it like that. I mean, that's how it's presented in our in our in our media, et cetera. It's one of the interesting things that's kind of come up as we talk about this is this whole idea of teaching critical race theory, which I really hadn't spent much time focusing on. But as you were talking here and I did a little bit of research in the background, really the whole thing that supposedly in a nutshell, like I said, I haven't looked at the whole thing. Supposedly, critical race theory now being interjected into our schools is an attempt at bringing awareness to the fact that it is, in fact, a social construct. So that's a very interesting heading because that's not how it's been portrayed to me in by overhearing it in conversation. And that's how most people are not are, are don't don't want to hear about it. Right. Like they're yeah. taking it as like this is an attack on. Right. Their I don't know their freedoms, teaching their kids about racism or whatever, whatever. Right. Like they feel. But in a nutshell that's it like we've been taught one way in this country for almost ever right yeah. forever <laughs> so like bringing in new information why if if it's true right we're not making things up i'm sure the people teaching critical race they're not trying to make things up but the people that are giving pushback maybe don't even want to understand that there is a different side yeah and it, it may not even be a want it may just be they're not even aware like because I'll, I'll tell you what, like when you first hear like, OK, they're going to teach this thing called critical race theory, the way that's described based on all of my learnings from 20. What am I? Oh, my God. Twenty nine years on this planet <laughs> <laughs> from twenty nine years on this planet. Like I have been taught I have been somehow influenced to believe that race is about skin color. Now, when I first hear this idea of critical race theory, I think so they're just going to talk to us about how skin color affects people differently and all of a sudden there's like all these triggers going off like wait a second that sounds like it could go down a whole rabbit hole but if you begin to listen to a little bit of what could talking about how race has evolved over time to suit the needs of a minority trying to overwhelm some type of group of i, I guess a majority and divide them in that type of way which is why, once again, I want to point out, anytime you feel like somebody's trying to divide you from another, be aware of that sensation, because that's what we're kind of getting into here, where race, and I'm going to try and paraphrase a little bit what, about what you were saying, could be because you like you have such an intense level of knowledge on this that I very much like to try and wrap it up in a bow for others like us that have not necessarily spent as much time diving in. So to me, basically, race is not so much about skin color or about any particular one trait Race is about whatever someone can try and lean into to take advantage of a situation to divide people for their own gain. How'd I do? I, that, I think that's pretty much it. Because let me give you this example of that, like a litmus test, right? Could we do with race what we've done with eye color? Well, could we do with, with eye color what we've done with race? Just Absolutely. with skin color. Absolutely. Straight up. Just that alone. Okay. Any, any what about physical trait. Anything. It could yeah. literally, and that's the whole point, right? If you travel, if you go around the globe, what you're gonna find is people that range from wider than, from lighter skin color than Stu to darker skin color than me and every shade in between. Mm -hmm. You will find that. And where we get into, this is my, this is the litmus test here. Fit those people into categories. How do you do that? 
what 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 strategy do we do each of us use this and this we could put this out like this some could be some interesting content but you put it out in uh, like day-to-day life what do you mean uh what category what bucket of race would you place those individuals in what box because we, we we have like what uh, we only have a handful of boxes but every skin color from whiter than you lighter than you to darker than me exists on this planet where do we draw the line what box do they fit in at what hue yeah yeah. Do you? That's where you start to realize it's all silly. It's all subjective. <laughs> it's it's all subjective, right? Like it's because there would be eight million vi- boxes, and that can't happen. Now we've we've agreed that it's not subjective. We operate as if it's real. Mm-hmm. Hence, all of our issues. We operate as if this is a real thing, but you can't deny that the effects and the impact is not real. Yeah. The effect Chris, the impact I feel is what, real as I feel hell. what you're saying there, Chris. Like it is it is subjective when you look at it from that perspective, but we are taught and and educated to believe that it is objective. And something else that I find very interesting about this, I, I, this this image always sticks out. It was like a it was a young um a young like kind of like light skinned guy, and he had like this whole like sticker or whatever, and like he was trying to compare like which one of these colors of skin cone do you match up with? And that's how we figure out like what it's like, wait, what? Like are we gonna start doing that with eye color? And one thing I want to point out here is an opportunity. There's actually an episode of a show called Rick and Morty where they dive into this. Now, I love this show because this type of show, ladies and gentlemen, you might find it to be an adult cartoon and maybe you don't like that. But it is all it is a show about getting you to ask why we do things the way we do in society. There are tons of different ways out here. If you want to start to ask why about your situation, expose yourself to people and shows and programs like The Good Life like Rick and Morty, like tons of other things out there that get you to look at your 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 perspective on the world differently. Now, in this episode, they basically started a race war over the different types of nipples people had. But they like sold you on it. You were like kind of bought in. Like, how the fuck? Like, yeah, of course. Like, there's no way that guy could be. It was like ridiculous. And the whole thing is to to point out this very same concept that could be is talking about. So if anybody is, is looking to poke holes in this argument that we're saying where it is relatively arbitrary could be is not a fucking loan. There are, there are, there are so many different types of peoples out there that have identified that it is arbitrary. It's the whole reason why from what little I know about critical race theory, it's being presented. It is not just skin color. It is arbitrary. Begin to ask why. Let me say this. Let me say this. Uh, I think we got to be careful um, when we use big terms like critical race theory because it's so loaded. What I'm saying is not necessarily critical race theory. I don't know what the hell critical race theory is. Yeah. Yeah. Right. What I do know, what I do know is the con (laughs) is the concept on its fundamental level. I'm telling you what I know about it, whether they wrap that up and toss it or whatever, because I've heard a couple of people come up and, and like have been, you know, I, I actually, to give you, bring you guys into the loop, right after um, college, I was studying to go to law school. So, you know, one of the things I was considering studying in law school was critical risk theory. theory right. So I looked into it a little bit, but, and, 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 but I, I was still unclear because we got to recognize here, especially uh, places of indoctrination, higher indoctrination. They're very crafty. Yeah at layering things to look like something that it's not okay so i'm careful right so i was i was kind of on that path i would have probably ended up like you know doing some sort of like a practice for a couple of years and then you know maybe doing some sort of like you know like uh like civil talk or like you know things like that probably we would be talking about this at a legal level right and i i promise you right if i had kept going that path i could spin the talk I know a lot of people that could spin the talk. You know what I'm talking about? They could spin it. They don't know. A, they don't know a damn thing they're talking about, man. <laughs> they don't. They don't because it, it. But but the thing is, we can we can jop about around it, right? So I I just want to be careful because what I'm I'm not promoting anything. Um, what I'm sharing with you is my experience and my own research and my own understanding of what's going on 
to perhaps inspire anybody that hears this to take this opportunity to dig a bit deeper. And I think that's what you're saying as well, Stu, is like challenge your un, your established way of looking at the world, your paradigm. See if you can take a step back and say, mm, I don't know about this. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Ask some questions. I think that's huge. And it's definitely a, you know, a thought that we talk a lot about here on, on The Good Life, right? Like, how often are you asking yourself, why is it this way? Why do I feel that way? Why, why does this happen this way? I think just asking that question, why, is incredibly important to getting to truth, to getting to what you know, your beliefs are versus what you've been told to believe. Right? A lot of those things, again, comes down to just us, us using our brain and actually thinking and having, again, this is why I go back to having the conversation. I know it's more than just having the conversation, but I think conversation is the catalyst, is something that starts people thinking and asking the right questions if they hear it. After this conversation, Stu may have some different questions. He may have some different questions than he had coming into this conversation. I think that's where it starts for so many people. You have to be presented information and maybe not in a bold way, just putting it in your face, but maybe just hearing a conversation that makes you say, huh, really? I didn't know that. No. And then you start your research, right? And then I think that's how we eventually get around to, uh, you know, the place, the place that we need to be, especially in conversations like this. Yeah, without a doubt. You know what this, you know, you mentioned, uh, could be you mentioned white guilt earlier. And white guilt is a very interesting topic. You know, I know, I know people that feel it. I know people that don't feel it. I know um, what, I, what I do know about it is it reminds me of this sensationalism that we seem to have in modern day society, where the moment somebody says something, if you relate to the header or if they've sold it well to you, kind of like what you're getting at here, all of a sudden you're on that team. And that team, you'll, you'll, you'll stand behind it. You, you may or may not look into it. But no matter what, like they had the sales pitch, they got you in the first seven seconds, you're there. And now you're following this group. And I think that um, no matter who you are, no matter what your race is by whatever traditional or perhaps atypical definition you want to call it, just take a moment, like whatever, whatever quote unquote side or organization or, or party or movement, whatever it is, just open yourself up to try and doing a little bit of research about what's in the fine print. And because there's so much like fine print, especially when it comes to law. I mean, we've only just begun talking about this thing that is critical race theory, but it is so complicated. Like they're teaching our kids this stuff. And like, there's a lot of people that are like going into, into school board meetings and like, totally throwing their hands up in arms. And my question is, how familiar are you with the content? Whether you're on the same side of it or whether you're on the opposite side, like how familiar are you with the details or are you just taking whatever it is at face value? Cause then you're just, then you're just being swayed. So. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. And we're taking mental shortcut. We're being cognitively lazy, right? We're being lazy. And so we want, this is why I always pump and, 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 and I've been in so many, you know, situations where it's like, ah, this guy could be like, you just, you know, you always just like, man. but I think it's important for us, especially when these things are so big, right, to be, you can't say out of the same mouth that you want solutions for these things, yet you're careless about how you go about it, right? Yet you, you know, everything is a joke. Right. Oh, why? We can't laugh about it. You can, but like you're always laughing about it. And that's all you ever do. Right. So then, <laughs> what do you actually want a solution or do you just want to laugh about it? And that is your solution, which is totally fine as well. Right. But we're kind of fooling ourselves a little bit. I think, you know, we're being careless. Right. We don't take the time to do our research beyond what we're told. We don't take the time to have um, to put down our guards and have conversations like this. I can speak on this stuff because I've been in so many rooms where I made myself uncomfortable so that I could understand this stuff on a deeper level. 
so that I could hear different experiences from individuals in my, in my now I ain't gonna lie to you, right? Like in high school, middle school or something, some of that was forced at first, right? I, I was, I was, you know, ah, uh, send him, he'll, you know, send him to this conference and send him to that conference. And so I, a lot of that was kind of like just pushed on me to the point where it's like, okay, fine. I guess I'll start paying attention because I do live this every day. Right. But I, I say that because it, it, we, we, we and, and, and yet we all want to just like quickly debate. <laughs> we all want to quickly have an opinion and, 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 and go in on something based on this headline. I like the way you put it, Stu, based on this headline that we read, right? So-and-so does so-and-so. Oh my God, they're so terrible. This is all going on. And I think, Stu, and this is, I didn't want to go here. I think this is like a part three conversation because I don't want to let people off the hook that easily too, where they can just point to like the sensationalism of things that occur and then relate it back to the paradigm and claim and make all types of conclusions, right? I think you were alluding to that a lot, a little earlier. I agree with that. I don't go to that first because I feel like there's a couple of different conversations that need to be had way before that. One is in-house, individually in-house, whoever you consider to be in-house with, right? You is have that, like that circle. Inner circle, I'm talking like Family unit. in the boxes that they've put us in. If you fit and you consider mm. yourself to be in the black box, I think there is a, a house, right? A house of individuals that have similar enough set of experiences that they can have different conversations, right? So, for example, on the screen, just because we have screen here, I can have a different type of discussion with Chris than I can with Stu based on lived experiences on the boxes that we've been placed into. Right. We didn't choose. We, you and get, you know, maybe you're on the border. You could choose. I don't know. But you have different. I believe that that conversation is different than the conversation of when we then mingle together on a higher level and have a different conversation. Right. Because yeah. you're if you try to hold me accountable right now, man, it's, it's not going to work. Right. But if I get my healing done first and I get a conversation, with somebody that understands me, I come out of that and then have a higher conversation much, much better. I'm much more open. I've had my healing so I can hear you differently rather than creating your he hearing. So if you take anything from this, I, one of the, I'm saying is there's steps, just like there's steps to rebuilding your health when, you're, when you've are when you been living in this toxic environment for so long. We've been living in a toxic environment as it comes to this. So then we got to take steps to clean it, that, right? We can't just jump to step 10 when we haven't taken care of step one, two, three, four, right? And I think one, two, three, four, some of those are unlearning, educating, healing our individuals, ourselves. And part of that healing for me may be things that come from race, right? Or or maybe it's not. Mm. And then garnering the, enough of the same conversation or words right or language so that we can have a much better understanding and discussion on this on these topics yeah i think that's just the first three steps for sure i think uh one thing i want to jump in with is uh is just for individuals like i do think starting in-house makes a lot of sense um for the most part that's that ends up being the the environment we typically grow up in i think you may have been a bit of an exception with that but at least you had your family unit um but I, what, what I would like people to be aware of is while you're having these in-house conversations, remind yourself that there is a potential for that to be an echo chamber. So by the time you're ready to move on from the in-house conversation to going to a conversation with somebody else of a different race, be aware that there may be some type of echo chamber. Just, just allow yourself to be as open-minded as possible when communicating with that other group, because oftentimes we can all say it is the way it is because we've had shared experiences and it's just it's it's almost like a chicken before the egg thing like do you spend do you spend the first part of your life trying to like get away from the in-house because no matter what like you there's party that may gravitate to that do you try and go out there and have all these different types of conversations with people that look different and sound different and practice different um but i definitely i definitely like what you're saying like how at, at the end of the day what we agree on fundamentally is have the conversations with the people that have the things in common as well as the people that don't. Yeah, 
And I'll to just real quick before before you take it home, Chris. I think it's important to distinguish that it, it uh it's steps, right? So it's a timing thing, okay? For some folks, this is why I say start. You know, you can start in house, but listen, there's some things that my mom can tell me, my brother can tell me that you guys will never be able to tell me, and I hear it the way that I hear it with love. You understand what I'm saying? So if that level of if that healing, this is what I'm saying, healing is what does that transformation where I don't have to think about what I'm tiptoeing and whatever, because I'm speaking with freedom, full self-expression, authenticity, and full intention, but yet I'm still responsible for my words. That's healing. That You know, you go through that process of healing. Some people may already be there, so they don't need that step. They can j jump just to the next one, but everybody's different. That's why you have a process. Go ahead, Chris. No, that's huge, man. That, that's huge. This has been such a good conversation, even though like I just was kind of sitting here thinking like, man, I just want to hear Stu and Kabi talk like for the rest of the night. Like that's just it's just dope to hear. And, you know, again, being vulnerable enough to say what we don't understand or like kind of the thoughts that we're having and being able to create a space where we get a chance to just dialogue and go back and forth to eventually create change. Again, this is not just dialogue for the sake of dialogue. This is dialogue for the sake of we want things to get better. We want to be better, right? Like those types of things uh, are incredibly important. And again, I just, you know, I, I, I appreciate you, you two gentlemen for having the conversation. I appreciate everyone that's been checking in on uh, Facebook. Shout out to Aaron, by the way, Aaron said, checking the right box is difficult when you're a blend of a bunch of things, right? So he definitely identifies could be with your point um, on that side. So thank you for that, Aaron. Thank you for everybody that's been joining us on Instagram, throwing in their, their, their two cents as well. And uh, we want to continue these conversations. We f I firmly believe, firmly believe that the more that we can have these types of conversation tonight happen to be on race, really breaking down some bottom barrier type of like the, 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 the basic level of entry to definitions of things and how this actually shapes how we continue to move, how we think about things. I think these types of conversations around things like race, but also around the topics we talk about around our health, just breaking things down to the, those base levels of like, what is it that we can agree on that needs to be improved or that we need to focus on same thing around our money, same thing around our relationships, same thing around our actual mental well-being and, and, and uh, fulfillment in life. I think these conversations are just incredibly necessary. And I encourage everyone listening to join us every single Wednesday and let's keep having these conversations. We love the dialogue. We love to go back and forth. We love to hear your two cents, right? And again, this helps the masses. This helps so many more people really, like I said, have a different thought process and really dive in and be able to make make some changes in their world. So, gentlemen, again, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate, appreciate you. you, Chris. Absolutely. And Absolutely. And for everybody that's out there listening, again, share this with a friend. Do what you got to do to get this in front of some people. But we're going to be back here every single Wednesday. Again, we're doing the pregame hour before from 7 to 8. Um, and then from 8 p.m. Eastern, which is 5 p.m. Pacific. Till nine, we're going live here to do the actual show. You can catch the replay of the show on our Facebook. You can catch it also on uh, our YouTube page. Uh, but either way, we want to keep this conversation rolling, okay? So until next time, guys, we're going to sign off for the good life. We'll come back. Maybe this deserves a part two, part three. We'll figure it out as always as, as we come back next week, all right? All right, guys. Enjoy the rest of your, enjoy the rest of your night. Keep living the good life, guys. Take care, y'all. Peace.